Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to look at a David Brown Selectomatic 990 but it might as well be an 880 or a 700 or even a 1200 series and we're going to look at the hydraulic system and the hydraulic system might be a bit intimidating until you know how it works. We're going to look at all the different functions of the hydraulic system. We'll talk about the individual elements that make up the hydraulic system and then we'll, we'll look at the different operating modes and where they are used for and how you can set it. And then finally we'll take a deep dive into the hydraulics themselves, how it all functions with all the valves and the spools and the release valves and the uh, hydraulic pump. Uh, that's going to be quite theoretical with schematics, but it's so important to know that before you can actually troubleshoot and fix your tractor or your hydraulics on your tractor. And again, this is on a David Brown 990 Selectomatic, but all the David Browns of that area are about the same. The 880s, the 700 series, and even the 1200 series. There are small variances, but overall the philosophy of the operation is the same. The whole purpose of the hydraulic system is to be able to lift an attachment through the lifting arms in the back of the tractor. And the downwards movement of the lifting arms is actually through the weight of the attachment. And in this case, it's going to be my weight because I have no attachment on it. And the control for the speed descent is done by this control knob. We can turn it counterclockwise or clockwise depending on what we want to achieve. Turning it clockwise makes it slower in descent. Turning it anti-clockwise makes it faster in descent. It is located just below the control handle. The hydraulics and gearbox are using the same oil. The hydraulic pump is fitted inside the PTO housing and this is the PTO housing right here. So if you have to work on the hydraulics pump or you want to replace it and I will have a video on it, you will have to remove this complete block, the PTO block in the back here. Now this is on a 990, an 880 and a 700 series. The 1200 series has the hydraulic pump actually in the front of the engine. The hydraulic pump on the 990 provides about 2000 PSI. To move the arms up and down we need a piston and this tractor is fitted with an additional support piston besides the normal ram cylinder. But all tractors have de facto the main ram cylinder sitting behind this enclosure. What you see here is a latch release so you can actually lock the ram cylinder. But let's have a look on the other side so we can have a closer look on the ram cylinder itself and the three-way valve. This is the actual ram cylinder and it's a built-in hydraulic cylinder that will move up the rocker shaft for the lifting arms. On the side here we find the three-way valve and this is an extra attachment on this tractor. These tractors were fitted with many different options, so yours may be slightly different. So in the top position, it allows the hydraulic system to work with the normal lifting functions. In the middle, it's kind of blocked, and if I push it all the way down, then I'm going to drive external hydraulic equipment. The big steel tube that you see here underneath, uh, connected to these endpoints here, that's where you find the ram cylinder, is actually the ram cylinder rocker shaft. Of the PTO we have a feedback mechanism and the feedback controls actually the depth uh, once we are in depth mode and that's done through this cable here which is going back to the hydraulic system more specifically to the spool valves. If something is attached to the tractor, a device, a plow for instance, then depending on how deep the plow goes it may push back more or less on the spring. And when that happens, this cable will transfer that movement to the hydraulic system and thereby adjusting the lifting arms. And of course, if the lifting arms go up, then you will see a feedback on this mechanism here. So this is how that works. Very important for the uh, depth control mode. But we'll talk more about it once we start talking about the depth control itself. 
The hydraulic system has four operating modes and the selection is made by the selector here. If it's in the middle position, then we are in what we call the lift position. If we move it to the left hand side, then we are in the depth control and if we move it to the right hand side then we are in the traction control mode. Traction control is also used for aux driving auxiliary hydraulic equipment. However, you cannot move the lever unless you have moved the control lever all the way to the back and push it over the spring force that you will feel once it's at the end and then you can actually select the mode you want the hydraulics to operate in. So I'm going to place it back now to the normal lift mode. And under this cover you will actually find the hold and the bypass valve. So I already ended the screws and you can actually see the two valves. We'll talk more about it and in another video we'll start looking at the adjustments of it. And here is the control handle where we're going to control the position of the lifting arms up or down but we'll also control the traction with it in the TCU mode and that's why you have this little pointer here that you can move back and forth to find out where the starting point is of getting more traction. If you move away from that point then you're going to have more traction but we'll talk about this once we cover the traction control mode. The David Brown has four hydraulic operating modes. Depth control also called draft lift or positioning and traction control and of course driving auxiliary hydraulic motors. The depth control as the name implies is actually controlling automatically the depth of your attached device. So if we are attaching a plow without supporting wheels then the plow will dig itself into the ground depending a bit on the type of dirt or ground it's plowing. And if we are not controlling the linkage or the lifting mechanism accordingly then the plow will get deeper and deeper or it may even go up. So therefore um, there is what we call depth control and the depth control is selected on the selector of for the mode of operation as you've seen before and then um, the feedback mechanism as I've shown you before on top of the PTO housing that bit spring and the cable will then regulate actually the depth. So no matter what the ground type is, no matter how the plow behaves, it will be compensated by actually raising or lowering the lifting arms, so to keep a steady depth. So let me show you on how the depth control system is working. It's a bit tricky to do it because the tractor has to be running, so it's going to be a little bit noisy. And I will simulate a weight on it. Uh, I might have to stand on it to have it going down again, uh, but normally that would be the weight of the plow. And I will play here with this top cylinder here, remember with the spring. So I'm going to pull it out a bit and I'm going to push it back a bit and you will see the reaction that you will have here on the lifting arms uh, in a um, what we call depth control mode. So let me start the tractor and then we'll see what happens. See that? If I pull on this, then it will go down, but of course I will have to stand on it because I have no weight on it. See how that goes down? And then it stops. So let me do that again. I am the plow actually, right? <clears throat> what you just saw was that I was the weight actually and if I pushed on that spring there then the whole mechanism went up and if I pulled on that, I pulled back a bit, then the whole mechanism came down, but I had to stand on it because they had no other weight on it. And this is how the depth control works. Uh, there's a cable right here, which is going all the way back to the spool valve. And that's how you can actually regulate the depth of your plow. In a kind of, I would say, automatic manner. The lift mode is about 
holding the lifting arms in a certain position. So if you have an attachment like a mowing bar but that has no wheels, you want to keep it on a certain height. And that's what you adjust with the manual control handle here on the side. And then you just lift that up to the right height and it will stay there. So basically it's more of a hold than a lift uh, functionality. Uh, the traction control mode is nothing more than shifting the weight of the attachment more to the back of the tractor, so more towards the rear axle of the tractor. Uh, you can imagine that you have a breaker to break up the ground and then the ground may be very hard, it may be tough, and the top layer may be very wet and slippery so the, the wheels are losing grip. So if you want to get more grip then you want to move the weight of that breaker more towards the tractor by controlling the lifting arms and you can set the amount of uh, transfer of weight that you want to have in other words the amount of movement of the rear arms lifting arms on the um, manual control knob and you need to adjust that depending on your speed and depending on the depth you are actually using the breaker so let me show you briefly on the way that DCU mode is set First of all, we go into select traction control. So I need to move the lever all the way back and then place it on traction control and then let go. To lift the arms, we need to move the um, handle all the way to the back. And then you will feel the resistance, that's the spring. Overcome the spring by pushing it all the way down and when you do so, the arms will lift. And then let go and the handle will come back to a hold position and the arms will be stable. So you need to push it back as long as it's necessary to adjust it to your attachment that you have and then let go. And then the next step is to find out where is the pickup point for the uh, weight transfer. And that's by moving the handle backwards, in fact now forward toward the front of the tractor until the point whereby you see the arms slowly lifting. And if you reach that point, then you can use this pointer here to position it so you know exactly where that starts and now you are ready to use it in the field. You may have to adjust this a little bit depending on the speed you're driving. So if you want to have more traction, you move this handle forward. If you want to have less traction, you move it backward. Now to do this, I need to have the tractor running, so I'm gonna crank it up. And keep an eye on the piston here, because that one is gonna move up. So now I'm gonna move my control handle all the way to the back up to the spring, as I explained before. If I pass by the spring load, the piston will move up to the level I want to have it. Once it's at level, I'll let the handle go. Done. I have my right level. So now I'm going to move the handle back and see at what point the lifting arm starts to move up again. So I'm moving it forward. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Now I have the point. So my pointer is about this level here. So now I know anything over here between the back end and my pointer is not causing any weight transfer. Once I pass this black pointer, I have weight transfer and you will see the back end going up. There we go. And that's how simple TCU is. And the last mode is to drive auxiliary hydraulic motors. I have two connectors here, an in and an out. And for that one, I need to select TCU mode and I have to rotate my three-way valve to external. Select again TCU and with this handle right now and the three-way valve set to external, I can now control the flow. So if I pull the handle forward, then I have a little flow of oil to my hydraulic motor. If I push it all the way to the back, I have maximum flow. This is how you can control it. And in my specific case, I need to push down the three-way valve all the way to the bottom. That will give me uh, power towards the auxiliary hydraulic motors. In the middle, it's blocked as I said before, and in the top, it's normal internal working for lifting TCU and depth control. So we have covered most of the elements that make up the hydraulic system 
We also talked about the different operating modes, but we forgot one, and that's the hydraulic filter. And here is that hydraulic filter, which is fitted all the way underneath the gearbox. Underneath the gearbox, you will find a metal housing where this filter is sitting. So this is the hydraulic filter. You will have to remove the housing to get to it, and inside you even have a little magnet. And it's a pretty important part. Uh, some of those tractors, they actually have a warning light if you have to replace the hydraulic filter or not. So now it's time to get a bit more serious and we're going to look into all the different hydraulic circuits that are involved in the different operating modes so we can get a better understanding on how this whole mechanism works and it's going to aid you in troubleshooting and repairing of your David Brown hydraulic system. It doesn't really matter if you have a 1200, a 990, an 880 or a 700 series. It is all more or less the same. There are some small differences, but in general it is the same principle. Mm -hmm.